Hi everyone, at CMC Markets. This is Tuesday, the end of the day in uh, U.S. trading. March 26th, and I am Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist at MarketGage.com. Doing this weekly update, this is a quiet week so far, and also a short week as Friday we will be closed for Good Friday, which is interesting because they'll be releasing PCE numbers that day on a day when the market can't reconcile. But nonetheless, here we are after making new highs last week post-Fed meeting coming off and typically we will see day five after a Fed meeting somewhat disappointing. Historically, if you're not sure about that statistic, I encourage you to go on our website, marketgage.com, and check out the outlook that Jeff Bish wrote all about that with great charts and history on reactions after Fed Day. But nonetheless, here we are now. The high of the entire move was at 52.61. And we closed that day, the low was 52.41, and the next day we closed underneath that at 52.34. So technically, again, we're getting a low volume sort of reversal. Doesn't necessarily mean, as we haven't seen one in quite some time, it'll be devastating in terms of 10% lower, which of course would be like a 500 point move. But it does look so far like we're getting a bigger red bar today as we're getting into the close that we've had in a while. So in terms of looking forward on the SPX, the other interesting aspect, of course, is one more mean reversion. We've had them before and they haven't gone anywhere. So last week I mentioned to you that we had not been under this 50-day moving average on our real motion momentum indicator in a very, very long time. So if the momentum continues to go down and we break under the 50, then perhaps this is the start of a bigger correction. One thing I can tell you is that there are a lot of people on the sidelines who kind of miss the boat and are praying for such correction. So what kind of numbers can we look at right here? Well, this is an interesting day, the day before, because you had a classic doji. So if we look at the range, 52.19, 52.18, right? That was the open and the close. That's a classic doji. 52.18, let's call that then our pivotal number. So I would say above 52.19, will be bullish below 52 19 or 18 we will have to be somewhat i would say neutral to cautious to the downside if it breaks down under this 15 8, 18 and with today's low by the way at 5204 then i think we really have to look back here and if you look at look at the wicks here there's three wicks here there's another one here and another one here all of that comes in at around 5180. Now the low this day was at 5171. So I would say 5171 to 5180 will be the next area of support for us to look at. And of course, if that breaks down, then the next area we'd be looking at would be the top of this wick here and the bottom of this wick here, or around 5135. On the upside, of course, if we get through 52.19 tomorrow, for some reason, we have a strong end or middle of the week, then uh, I would be saying now you have to look at this high right here at 52.30. We'd have to get through that. Today's high, of course, was 52.35. You can see we didn't stay there very long. And then over that 52.30 to 52.35, I think your next area of good resistance would be the low of this day, which is at 52. 40. My sense is, given the momentum, given the fact that we have been up for so long, and given the fact that in another couple of weeks we're going to start earnings, we have a stronger dollar, and our yields have remained relatively firm even after somewhat of a dovish Fed, that will work our way a little bit lower before we see a potential higher. So the gold futures continue to outperform the SPY. And at this point, we're seeing a bunch of consolidation and chop. A couple of things you can see immediately that look in better shape than the SPY is down here. If we take a look at the momentum, because we're holding the Bollinger Band, and we saw that the SPY looked like it was starting to get that mean reversion. And this is also pretty far from the 50-day moving average. So that gives us some room. 
potentially for some downside. It seems to me like right now the overall range is between 2150 and 2180 and we could chop in between those $30 and we can do that for the rest of the week clearly. So where would we start to get a little bit more ambitious in terms of a long gold? Maybe from a very near term standpoint if we get over this 2180 that would bring us probably back notice there's resistance all the way but 2185 to 2190 and even if we spike through 2200 like we did on this day making a high of 2225 it's always going to be about the close just like it was down here when we waited so patiently for that first close over 2100 with lots of chop in between under 2180 of course then I think once again really you have to look at that 2150 as potential maybe this week it stops a little bit above that at 2160 and if we do break down under that 2150 then I would say the next area that you're going to be looking at would probably be somewhere around here at 2123 2125 longer term we do not believe that this thing will break back down under 2100 and if it does it would be ever so brief maybe 2080 and then pop back up and like I said over 2200 at this point on a closing basis we see no reason why gold can't continue going up and what would make gold go up of course would have to be the silver futures which right now hasn't cooperated so at this point with all the talk of inflation we're still not seeing the classic signs that we look for for inflation we have the dollar that's strong we'll take a look at that momentarily we have the yields that are sort of flat certainly not lower uh, and we have a uh, gold miners hanging in there but not necessarily going up and here we have silver futures same thing hanging in there but not necessarily going up at this point so you can see we're getting close to a golden cross here and on momentum we landed right on the Bollinger Bands so we're still in good shape where would things start to look a little bit iffier I think is if we break down under 2380 so that gives us a lot of wiggle room here to have some chop and still keep the uptrend intact for the much nearer term right now, if we take a look at the low of this way, day 2472, figure 2475, we're above 2475, then I would have to maintain more of a friendly bias. Of course, we have resistance all the way up, starting with 2510 then really basically even going up here to 2538 to 2540 and you can see on this day where we opened that was at 25 uh oh, oh five, excuse me we opened at 2580 that would be amazing and it's really 2650 i think that we have to clear to go into a crazy uptrend so going back now the other way uh if we break down under these lows right here the low today being 24 uh, 50 then essentially once again we're looking at maybe this level here at 2427 um, and then again possibly like I said maybe we'd see a low as much as 2380 but I can't imagine we're going to go much lower than that at this point but of course anything could happen so last week we talked about the dollar yen and we looked at the fact that after the Bank of Japan had finally raised interest rates a little tiny bit it had a negative impact on the end and we know that it definitely behooves uh, the Japanese government to not allow the yen to free fall but nonetheless it is definitely weakened against the US dollar this of course leads with the dollar however we talked about that 150 right we got through that 150 pretty handily and that we said that we might have to look back to some historical movements back here which is really going back to uh, November 2023, that the next area of resistance would be exactly where it's come into, which is around 151.70. So if it gets through 151.70, I think that means dollar gets even stronger, and then we can look at some of the implications to the yen and the Japanese stock market. On the other side, if we see the dollar break down under 151.26, then I think we might be able to see this come back down first to 150.50, and then of course that would be looking at 150, which was the huge breakout, even though we had all of this work prior to that. So you can see that's pivotal, ultimately 150, 150. 
150 50 or 150 even now if we go back a little further let's say we do get through these numbers of 150 170 then the peak that we've had right here at the middle of November is at uh, 150 190 so that would be the next target okay moving on to oil um, this is cash crude uh, of course, we've been trying to get through that $82 barrel after we were briefly above it the week before. We had an inside day today, so it's consolidating at these pretty good levels. You can see that breakout over 79, but really it was 80 for us. That was the bigger breakout, so 80, of course, remains support. Uh, in terms of this next overall move, if we just scrunch back a little bit here, you can see that if we can get back over 82, and look at where it closed this day at 81.95 yesterday. So if we get back through 81.95 or 82, the high yesterday was 82.58, then I think we can probably go back up to around 82.75. And it doesn't really, really get interesting now unless we break through 83. And if we break through 83, we just have to look historically back here to the left and you could see the next real resistance area would be 8350 and there's going to be resistance all the way up the question is is can this make a move the way let's say coco has made this insane move are the fundamentals strong enough like what we saw probably not but nonetheless what we are seeing is demand is much higher number one we've had a series of lower highs and now that we're above most of the moving averages if you look at the momentum down here what you can see is we touch down on the Bollinger Band and the momentum is holding. So unless we start to see some trouble where we get down and we really break it and go into a mean reversion, which case could give us a more severe sell-off, we're going to say that sideways action with those numbers that I just mentioned to you, those to look for, is probably going to be the name of the game as we continue this week. Two more things to look at. This is natural gas. Uh, natural gas right now has a very interesting formation here. Look at how it gapped up. It wasn't a new low like what we saw here. So it turns out that this low right here at 156 was good and the low here was at 159. With this gap up, we're seeing some sideways action, but essentially until this really gets back up, and not even that far away from here. We don't want this to look like another head and shoulders. Guess what? If I see my cursor to the left where I have put it to this low, through this body right here, here, and then down through these levels right here, basically what it shows me right now is that if we get through the high of today and also the body of the candle from the day before, we might be onto something. And what is that high right here? Is at 182.70. So through 182.70, we will keep our eye here what happens with the 50-day moving average, which comes in right now at around 198.2. And finally, I'm going to show you sugar. This is a really fascinating chart to me because we're totally in terms of an inflation barometer could go either way right here so if we look at this formation right here we could have a head and shoulders top of course that certainly tells us that if we break down under 20 cents a pound that would mean that we're going lower on the flip side though we could also have an inverted head and shoulders bottom which means really until we get through let's say 2267 to 23 which is just slightly above where that 50-day moving average is, we don't know. And that's how closely we have to play this right now. So I'm not looking necessarily for a day trade on this. Today was actually a good day, as you can see, was the highest close we've had since back here in uh, in the end of February. So for March, this turned out to be the best close. So that means essentially to me right now that if we just looked at some near-term numbers, 2220 is probably a pivotal area, as in slightly below that. Uh, we would possibly maybe go back down to around 2150. And if we hold this, then we can start looking at those levels we just talked about as we get closer to that 50 day moving average or 2275. The other interesting thing here is the momentum. I and mean, we had the mean reversion here right at the lows. This is such a nice momentum indicator right here. But we haven't really gained in momentum until today. So it's possible, too, that we're going to see a bullish divergence, which means this will clear the 50, 
while the price has not. When we have these type of bullish divergences, what we do want to see is price confirmation, which means we will want to see two closes over here before we get excited about buying sugar futures number one and even more interested in the fact that after the big cocoa move, sugar could be next in terms of the skyrocketing commodity. And of course, as we know, back in the 70s, it even led the gold and the silver. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. You all have a great week. Happy long weekend. Happy Easter. And I'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching and bye for now.